So finally, wrapping it up, let's talk again about these four dimensions of information systems, where we talk about the data and the information uh, and the technology on the other side. So in terms of the data, the content of those things in your information system and the information itself, the technology, the software and the hardware. Um, on the other hand, people, you know, the customers, people who are using the systems and the organization, how you're organized. So let's take, uh, let's take a look at those four components when it comes to e-commerce. So first of all, when we talk about the data and the information, think about your products and services. What is it your customers would need to know? Remember that because people can't go to a physical store to examine the product, to study it, they would rely on your website or on your system to obtain that information. So you should be able to offer at least the same information that somebody would have in the store but even better, if, you know, because it's e-commerce, it allows you to add even more information like reviews. Uh, you could link to other sites. So make sure that when you design e-commerce, you think clearly about the products and the services and what the information is that you need to store to you know, offer the same or better experience to your customers when they're shopping and when they're looking for these products and services. So, um, here you can think about that this is also where you can create a competitive advantage the more information you can offer in a aesthetically a pleasing way and in something that relates to the customer the you know the better your competitive advantage will be over your consumers um, so as we shown in the previous lecture here is that food ordering the drive through with the food trucks you know the information was clear the menu was there what the ingredients are so the whole process and the service was easy to understand for me as a consumer. So once you have the information and data structured in a way, uh, you can use it to build a website. So here again, you can think about building a website yourself or you can use existing platforms. As we talked in chapter nine, those have different benefits. Those all have different pros and cons that you need to outweigh. Outsourcing something makes it easy for you and uh, reduces your risks but you probably have less control to fine tune things to your exact need. Uh, but it is often cheaper than building something yourself, which allows you to customize more, uh, but you probably need a higher investment. And of course, security plays a big role in that. So the key thing here is that there is a lot of options to build uh, technology um, for your e-commerce nowadays. So you have really have to think about a good fit between your business model the competitive advantage you want to gain and uh, your customers where they are. So it should be a good fit. Uh, technology actually these days is not the biggest challenge itself. There is enough. So this is from a store in Beijing in China where they offer these terminals uh, for that even connect to the internet that allow you to do micro commerce, mobile commerce, and you can just buy them and they can configure them for you. Uh, as I've shown you in the previous picture of that lady selling the food on, a, on, a, on the street food, they use these kind of terminals and they can do all kinds of things like connect them to the internet or WeChat, the social media in China. Um, so there's plenty of options. So the key thing here in the technology is knowing what it is you need and how to make that fit. Finally, uh, sorry, and the third part is to think about your internal organization. If you are transitioning or you are starting as a e-commerce company, you need to think about, you know, some aspects like physically, how do products and services get delivered to your customers? Which shipping company do you need to work with? But also think about things that people want to bring back to your store. Return of goods is a major, has a major impact on your supply chains and on your company. And, offer, and often is a huge uh, hidden cost that a lot of e-commerce companies don't think about because people will order things, they will try them and send them back. Uh, in one of the later lectures on supply chain, we'll come back to that. But for Zalando, for example, that's all closed. They have to clean, check every package that comes back. If it doesn't fit, uh, clean it, repackage it and, and sell it again. So really think about how you can offer the products and services to your customers, not only in terms of communication and technology, but what does that mean for your organization? Which people do you need to hire? Which companies do you need to work with that can help you deliver the products and services or help you do the marketing or help you uh, deal with return of goods 
and so on. So you don't necessarily need to build all of these things within your own organization, but you should think about who do I need to work with? What do I need? And then think about whether you want that in your company or you can outsource it. Uh, for example, Airbnb, if you start offering on Airbnb, um, there's companies that do a lot of the work that you need to do for Airbnb for you, like uh, handling of the keys, cleaning, even making pictures of your home and, and marketing your home. Um, but those are definitely things aside from the technology and building website is think about what processes you need to arrange and how to organize them. And finally, the key thing here is to, to know your customers. Um, and that's hard these days because you, there's, there's a, a lot of, you know, you, you don't physically meet companies, your customers, especially for those that are transition that were purely uh, physical stores. So brick and mortar and now transitioning online. How do you find and reach your customers again? Because you know them because they were physically, physically visiting you. Uh, how do you refine them and how do you recreate that connection, but now through digital means? So which channels could you use for that? And you could look at chapter five on social media and virtual communities on how to do that. So reach out and start establishing or build new connections with customer relationship management. We'll come back to that in chapter eight. Um, so getting to know your customers and establishing connection with them or re-establishing that connection is a key thing when it comes to persons and this uh, e-commerce. That is often a place where you could gain a competitive advantage over your competitors, this personalized approach, knowing and reaching and communicating with your customers. So an example of how these elements combine into a, some new way is again, an example from China where you can offer pretty much everything online. If you're at home, you're hungry, you can grab your mobile phone. There's a lot of dishes you can order from and those dishes will be delivered to you uh, in a very short time frame. And you can do that for all kinds of restaurants. So if you're hungry, you're sitting behind your PC, grab your mobile phone, look at what you want to order, order it, and you can track how the food is being delivered to you. Um, that sounds pretty common nowadays in a lot of countries, but uh, China is leading in that example uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, I'll give you an example. This was during my last visit in China. We we're in a hotel room and we we're feeling a bit peckish and we wanted to get some food. We wanted to get some snacks, essentially some groceries like a soda and some uh, crisps. So we took a mobile phone and we looked at some, you know, which uh, which crisp we wanted to order. And I'll have to imagine, I have to say that, you know, it does help to have somebody with you, uh, that speaks Chinese to translate. Uh, but once you selected it, you could place the order and you could follow the driver that would go to the 7-Eleven the Albert Heijn, the local shop, local convenience store to get the products for you. And you would be able to follow that driver, the specific driver on the map and see if they approach. And finally, you, you know, when they were closed, you would go down to the lobby, the food, uh, the food and the groceries would get delivered to you. And, um, you know, you would be happy having your Coke Zero and your, um, I think this was barbecue strip or strip beef grilled chicken flavored crisps in the hotel room. Now, why I'm showing you this is that this example brings a lot of these things we talked about in this lecture together. It is knowing the products and services you offer. Uh, you know, conven the convenience store, the 7-Eleven. Offering that on an existing platform where you could go online, you could browse the products and services. Using mobile technology to make it easier for you to order, but also using mobile technology because you could track, you know, you could see the delivering, delivery coming closer to you. And also knowing the customers, because you could do it later now, you could essentially do this 24 hours a day and have it delivered to you whenever you want, regardless of you didn't need to order a certain amount. If you just wanted one bottle of Coke, you could have that delivered too. Uh, and it would happen, you know, the stores close around you, this could happen within 10 minutes or even less if you're close. Um, so for me, that is that transition from a convenience store to becoming more uh, a hub that delivers food using and uh, making that transition to an e-commerce and, but also this online to offline interaction. Uh, and I think you will see, especially nowadays with the Corona outbreak, more and more of these examples uh, popping up in our society, 
people thinking about not just grocery delivery, but all kinds of services that were previously rendered in person. You would go, to, you would step out to get something small. How can we make that happen uh, in, a, in, a, in a more structured way? And that probably also requires new services to be popped up. Again, the example here in China being uh, deliver, delivery service. They don't are not affiliated with one specific store, but those people would just go somewhere and pick up for you whatever it is that you need to be picked up, whether those are groceries or you need prints from the local copy shop from your for your thesis or you need some pencils. It doesn't matter. So they have these other organizations that, you know, ride around and deliver products, pick products up in one place, deliver them somewhere else. So those probably keep an eye on those because I imagine we will see similar developments as this Corona crisis continues around here. So next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to make that connection with new customers and customer relationship management to keep a connection with the existing customers. And finally, how all that physically deliverable, how the physical delivery of goods and information technology come together in supply chains. Thank you.